Hello and welcome to When Sunday Comes, a brand new podcast that aims to get into the heart of women's football and hosted by myself, Graham Falk. Today's guest moved to Edinburgh in the summer and instantly became one of Scottish women's Premier League's hottest properties with hearts. And despite just being 22 years old, has scored an impressive amount of goals in the colours of Oxford United and Lewis. Welcome to the show, Georgia Timms. Georgia, how are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Did I get your age right? 24. Oh, are you 24? Getting old. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know, I know. I say that to myself all the time. <laughs> I do apologise for that. Well, I'm 36, so to be fair, but you shouldn't feel too bad. Um, I'm determined to start the show with the same question all the time. Um, how's your morning been? All right. Yeah, had a good morning. It was up, coffee, breakfast. Lovely morning, to be honest. <laughs> do you have like a set breakfast? Do you have to eat like specific things or are you a bit more kind of by the way? Um, It depends. A lot of the time I just have uh, overnight oats. But mm-hmm. today I changed it up a bit. I just had a bagel. I can't beat a bagel. What's your What's your bagel topping of choice? Um, I usually either I'm just plain, just have butter, or I do have honey. Salmon and cheese. A lot of people. You what? Sorry. Salmon cheese. and cheese. Salmon and cheese. Oh, I'm not. A, I'm not a salmon person. Oh, I, I wish I was, but I'm not. <laughs> got off on the wrong foot. We better just go straight into football, I guess. Um, <laughs> you're not a salmon fan, but um, we're going to try and cover as much of your career as we can, as we always do. But obviously, that's difficult. Um, feels like there's plenty to dig into, but let's start with the sort of recent stuff. Um, at the point of speaking, which is the 19th of October, um, Hearts are sitting in the top four. You're one of the highest goal scorers in the league, I think, with six. You seem like you've settled in quite well. How are you enjoying sort of your start of life with Hearts? Yeah, absolutely loving it. Um, they've been so welcoming. The the coaches, the, all the staff, to be honest, the, the girls as well. Everyone, I think that's what's helped me settle in so well. Um, obviously, pre-season went really well. Um, I got a bit of confidence through that. And then first game of the season, it, it all started from there, really. Yeah, not too bad a hat, Rick, on your, your debut. Could you, yeah. I mean, I'm asking that obvious question here, but how do you, when you emphasize, emphasize having like a good debut, that's like the dream one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of players said that. Really, like it must be a dream debut, like having a hat trick on your, uh, obviously on your debut and everything. Um, to be honest, I, I'm quite a perfectionist, so even looking back, I was like, oh, I should have scored that one. Or um, even though yes, I had three, there was also stuff that I needed to work on. Um, so like we watching the game back, there was a lot of stuff that I was like, okay, um, I, I see where like I'm doing well, but I'm also looking to see where. I need to improve as well. I find it quite an interesting thing because obviously I, I work within Scottish Women's Premier League, as people know. Um, and this summer, there seemed to be like a big influx of players that came from England, which has mm-hmm. not really happened in the past. Obviously, um, Katie's at Hearts. She obviously spent time in Southampton, but former um, Lewis as well. Um, mm-hmm. Lucy Ashwood Clifford has really, really done well um, for Celtic. But there's, there's other players there as well, sort of in and outside of Hearts. I'm kind of curious, um, I live in Scotland, so it's local to me and I'm enjoying the way the league goes, but, but what was it about the league that's attracted you um, personally to come to, to heart and the league itself? Uh, to be honest, I, th- I think I wanted, personally for myself, I wanted a change and Scottish football is getting a lot bigger now, uh, which is good. And um, especially with hearts, like, they were very um, ambitious um, and you could see like it was going in the right way and I wanted to be a part of that. And uh, Ava and Sean were very like keen on having me, which was nice. Um, and I, I think that really attracted me. But like with everything that's going on, like for example, like the Sky deal that's just come out, um, it's definitely going in the right direction. And obviously, being English, like watching the English <laughs> England league all doing really well and like pushing up, it just shows that like it can happen to Scotland as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, you know you touched on. Uh, the Sky Sports deal, obviously, that's really fresh. I think maybe three weeks ago mm. at the time of speaking. I think we've got used to, which is such a massive thing, used to watching WSL and, and women's championship games for a couple of seasons now where it's not unusual to see women's football on on numerous channels. But maybe it still kind of is with the Scottish Women's Premier League because it's only really on Alba up until recently. But that's huge news that not only have Sky Sports invested sort of um, monetary stuff in, in terms of the league, they've invested in the League Cup, sorry, 
they've also committed to playing at least five games. It sounds small, but obviously mm. it's massive in, in, in many sense. I mean, from a perspective of the, the Hearts team, how did you all take that news? Because I think obviously it was in the works, but it still came as a bit of a surprise to us within the game, didn't it? Yeah, I think all the girls were like very excited um, because it just, like I said, it shows like it's, a, it's, it's stepping up. Um, and obviously, I think what has helped is obviously with England winning the Euros. Um, I think just as a whole, um, it's just pushing everything up, um, which is it's great to see, really, because obviously growing up, it wasn't that big. Um, and like it's going slow. Don't get me wrong. It's, but it is also like jumping very high. Um, and I know a lot of the girls and obviously all the staff are very excited for next season um, with this. And obviously it's a step by step, really. You're right in what you're saying in terms of it being like a, a slow, but like at the same time, it does jump high. I think the WSL was a bit like that. At first it was like, oh, women's games mm-hmm. on telly. Oh, England Linus is on the telly. Now all of a sudden mm-hmm. it's just commonplace and you tune in, you know when the game's going to be. There's there's people writing yeah. about it. And and I think the Scottish Women's Premier League's getting like that. Obviously, I deal with it from a completely different perspective. And obviously, I'm not involved in the, the filming or anything like that. I'm, I'm basically working for a media club, as people know, with Glasgow City. But you do know it's a difference. There's more people coming down. Mm. There's an extra like yeah. 100, 200 on the gate, maybe a bit more. There's people wanting interviews, more people requesting stuff more. Says me interviewing yourself, by the way. Um, <laughs> but I think it's quite interesting because I've lived in Glasgow for 10 years, and nine months when I went to university. But you're originally from the, the Cotswolds. Um, mm-hmm. It's a distance. Um, let's be honest, it's not exactly close. I'm guessing it's the first time you've lived in Scotland. What have been the pros and cons of the first few months of living in a new city and a new country? Um, to be honest, actually, this is my second time living in Scotland. Um, yeah, it, I lived here when I was seven. Uh, uh-huh. Only for a year. Um, I actually lived in um, uh, not far from Falkirk. So not far from Edinburgh, really. Um, but no, I couldn't really remember it, if I'm honest. But um no, the, 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 it's been amazing. Edinburgh is such a lovely place. Um, I, before I even came up here, everyone that has been to this place, like Edinburgh, has said how amazing it is. And I've definitely taken it in. It And it, it's, I think it's helped me settle in a lot. Um, and, yeah, no, it's beautiful. And I think, obviously, um, just to kind of end on your, your stuff with Hearts and, and the, the recent stuff, I think it's really difficult to kind of, at the start of the season, to set an aim, especially when you're newly semi-professional with a bunch of professional players and then a bunch of new players and a very fresh manager. I know she had last season, but mm-hmm. it's still a fresh manager. Um, but now that you're in fourth, is, is that heart as aim just to push up as far as you can and break that top four for the first time? Yeah. Um, Ava is very set on it um, and us as a team are. Um and we don't want to lose games. We don't, the, the thought of losing games, like, it's not great. Um, but, like, obviously, we have to be optimistic when we're playing, like, uh, the top three. But Ava still has that, I think we can get a win somewhere with the top three, um, which is great. Um, obviously, when we played Rangers not long ago, we all had this thought, like, we can get something from the game. Like, everyone, we were close to it. Um, but um, it just shows, like, the top three are, it was a bit of a gap between the top three and the other teams, but I feel like with new players coming in um, and it's pushing it up a bit, making it more competitive, which is good. But um, yeah, no, definitely the for fourth, it's going to be hard, but we're excited. We, we're trying to push for it as much as we can. And I think when you look at the, the games as well, you touched on there. I think I was speaking to um, Lucy Graham at, Everton and, and talking about Scotland and she said for such a long time or not for such a long time but but there's times when Spain were beating Scotland 8-0 and that, mm-hmm. that's not viable and she said it was about being competitive and all of a sudden we're fast forward a year and you've got your two ones against Holland obviously they got beat the other night against Ireland but in general they've been a lot more competitive against top top teams and I think mm-hmm. when you look at the top three Maybe previously in the past, you would get your fives and also six nils. But you touched on there the Rangers game, the Glasgow City game as well. It's been one or yeah. two goals in it. And, and as much as you don't want to get beat, that does play a part in your progression as well as a club, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, obviously, when we played them games, we were very... After, after losing them games, everyone's heads were down. We were annoyed that we had lost against Glasgow, we had lost against Rangers. And putting it in 
perspective from last year, I think a lot of the girls would have taken that loss um, and been glad that it was only 2-0. With us this year, we were very much disappointed that we didn't get anything from the game, which just shows that it's getting a lot more competitive and we want to do better, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think there's a lot of chat about the product. I don't know, always know if I agree with the idea of the product. And I think it's more about the uh, emotive aspect you have towards the team. That's what's going to grow it. However, there will be people who are interested in the product and the more competitive it is, the more it's going to grow. So ultimately, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree there. Um, rewinding all the way back to like when you were young now. So we're kind of like flipping it completely here. Um, <laughs> as you said, you grew up in the Cotswolds. What are your early memories of watching and playing football? Because I imagine even though you're young, not as young as I thought, but 24, um, <laughs> yeah. I think... It wasn't as popular when you would have been young, let's be honest. Um, so getting into it is is still at this moment in time an interesting story. But what, what were your, your memories of getting into it and playing football? Um, so it all really started when um, obviously I grew up in a little place called Morton in Marsh. Um, and my dad used to play football there. Um, and I used to always go and watch him on a Saturday and a Sunday. And I always used to be kicking the ball about whilst he's just playing football. And then he actually got me into playing for the Morton Rangers so I went and went and started playing for them and then I, I ended up uh, becoming captain of the boys team which uh, I think some of the boys weren't too happy about <laughs> but no um, no they were really supportive and um, whenever I used to go and play they always be like oh there's a girl playing there's a girl playing um, it was very much like that when I was younger like oh oh she's quite good she's a girl uh, which now you see and you don't really hear that as much now, which is quite good. Uh, but no, um, I obviously remember. No, I say it was really my dad that helped me um, and and also my nan and grand. Um, they used to always take me to training. Um, and then obviously when um, I got to 11, my dad was a massive Oxford United fan and he saw trials. So I went ahead and did trials and that's when I started playing for Oxford. Now, you were 11 when you started at Oxford, is that right? So it's quite yes. young, quite young, especially yeah. being involved with a club that's like, I don't want to sound bad to other clubs, but like everyone knows who Oxford United are. That's an actual club mm-hmm. club. Like that's got a, mm-hmm. a level of progression of getting into a, a league team. But you made yeah. your debut at 15. Now, I found out this random fact, uh, which I think is quite good, actually. I think people will be acutely aware, even if they're not massive women's football fans listening to this, who Sue Smith is. Your first game yes. was like Mark and Sue Smith, is that right? Yeah, at 15. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I was, um, growing up, I played in every position, which is also quite a weird um, fact. Um, but at that time, I was playing centre mid. And um, my manager, Les, then, he, uh, Les Taylor, he he was like, right, you're coming on. And I was like, oh, my God, uh, like panicking. I remember I uh, was panicking that much that I even forgot to put my shin pads on. Um, so I went onto the pitch like oh my god and then I remember just next to Sue Smith he was like right you're going to mark her and I was just like just like looking up like oh my god (laughs) Um, but no it was um, it was great like um, yeah no it's it's amazing to be honest like looking back at it now did you manage to get like a chat with her or anything I know obviously you're kind of opposition but you must kind of in some way be a bit in awe it would be hard not to be (laughs) Um, if I, I can't really remember, but I, I remember just, just being so shy. I was quite, quite shy back then. Um, um, I, I can't really, I, I, I can't remember actually speaking to her, if I'm honest. But I think I was just more in shock that I managed to get on the pitch, obviously being quite young and obviously being in the championship. So, no. I suppose it was towards the back end of a career uh, with Sue. But Sue, as everyone knows who watched the game, well, not how much quality she had. That's why she had so many caps for England and why she's an authority on women's football now on Sky Sports. But um, I suppose it's hard to kind of be a sponge when you're 15 in your first game. But like, did that, was that like a, not a baptism of fire, but does it, did it show you the levels you had to be to to kind of, if you wanted to be where you're at, just that being your yeah. first experience of it? Yeah, like, I re- I just remember then, even just getting a t- touch of the ball, it was just like, oh my God, I touched the ball. Um, now I look back, I'm just like, Wow, <laughs> I was so young then. Um, but it, no, it just shows what experience you need. Um, because I, I look back now and I'm just thinking uh, I was just the achievement for myself. And it just showed like how much I've improved and how much um, mentally as well. Um, 
it's just yeah no I look back at them kind of games and I'm just like okay I, I was a bit of a workhorse then so but we just had to improve in different things I suppose in a way as well when you come up against Sue Smith in your first game there's not many people across the leagues in the championship even the, the Scottish leagues that you could come up against that are going to be bigger names than that there's not many yeah. so it, it kind of I suppose it helps you being less overrode like if you played Sue Smith in week one and Sue Smith Mark two in, in week two, you're not going to be as overawed as you were in week one. So I suppose that's like the best kind of person you could come up against in terms of getting rid of those nerves. Yeah. I yeah, definitely. I also I can't remember what age I was actually. Um I also remember playing against Everton and um I I started the game and we I was playing on the wing and I had to mark uh, Chloe Kelly when she was at Everton. <laughs> and I just remember I was I think I was quite young then as well, and I just remember Obviously, she was a big name then as well. Um, so, um, like, little things like that, I look back at now and I'm just like, it just shows, like, the quality. Um, and I'm also very grateful. I think when you look at Chloe as well, she's, she's done all right, hasn't she, the past few years? Yeah, <laughs> she's, not yeah, yeah too no, she's bad. done really well. Got something, the winner as well. <laughs> something, something happened in the summer, I can't remember what, but... Um, <laughs> In terms of Oxford, you know, you, you can't deny that ultimately that was what started you on your career, not just from like playing at 15, playing against these players. You had a couple of really successful years. You won players player, you won supporters player of the season in 1819, top scorer in 1920. However, and you probably hate me for this because you probably want me to concentrate on the achievements, but there's something that really interests me about that time period, um, especially around that sort of level. I think I remember it really well because working with Borough at the time, which would be in Division 3. COVID hits, entire last few months of the season completely cancelled. Everything just shut down. Suddenly you're playing weekly, playing well, scoring goals, happy, and then all of a sudden everything just gets closed down and it's curtailed. Um, you're really young at that point. You're enjoying your football, you're scoring goals, you're getting Player of the Year awards, you're top scorer, and then football just stops. How tough was that period? Yeah, don't get right. It was a very tough period. Um, not just for football, just mentally as well uh, for everyone, just everything that was happening. Um, but also for the football side of it, it was very tough because I hate not playing football. Um, it was sort of, it was very much similar to just being injured, not being able to play. That mm -hmm. was how it felt. Um, but also, what was horrible about it is that no one knew when we were going to come back. It was very much like just like obviously no one knew so um in that sense yeah it wasn't great um but I always say like with football it's like a roller coaster you always have your ups and you have your downs so it's it's very much like um it was very challenging but then other opportunities came up during that lockdown um which is obviously when I went and signed for Lewis so um I always say everything happens for a reason so in that sense maybe that, I would never have left and I think that did happen with quite a few people I, I worked with a player who I hope not don't mind me speaking on her behalf but if it wasn't for Covid mm -hmm. she probably wouldn't have moved to a club in Italy and then then come back and played in the Scottish Women's Premier League and now currently plays in the Championship those opportunities might not have happened but because yeah. football was literally curtailed completely, it was like, well, if I don't play here, I don't play at all. Yeah, um, exactly. Like most of us could work from home. So if even if you work in a part-time job and all that kind of stuff comes into it. Yeah, I get what you mean, 100%. Um, it was even awful from a media perspective. Like you were like, do we count these goals as goals now that the mm -hmm. season's done and void? Or <laughs> do we have a player of the year? Or, um, But yeah. as you said, it, you know, it got you that move um, to Lewis. Now, Obviously, that was because of your form. I think you went in the summer of 2020. Yes. I give I remember it. myself, yes. <laughs> um, I think when you went, despite COVID and stuff like that, obviously it was before the Euros and we're seeing a lot different, but coming from 2019 onwards, because of the World Cup, it was going and the championship, the WSL was getting a little bit more known. It maybe wasn't got the boom that it has now, but but it, it, mm -hmm. it did have a boom. And obviously, Lewis was seen as a good, young, up-and-coming side what were your sort of biggest learnings from your time at Lewis and, and in the championship? Because at that point, like you said, you played in a few different positions for Oxford, but at Lewis, you were a striker, you were number nine. You got given the number nine shirt, I think. Yeah. Um, no, Lewis was, um, it was good for me. 
it was very um, much like a great, a great opportunity. Um, Simon Parker, who was the manager then, he was very um, good with me. Um, I learned a lot of stuff at Lewis. I had great coaches there with Simon and then we had Craig come in. Um, and it was very, that's where I think I started to learn a lot more. Um, obviously, I was at Oxford for like 11 to 12 years a uh, good coach there but like I learned a lot more different things and about myself and uh, just tactics and everything so going into that and I felt like the championship as well is, is a very hard league um, like there's not like you, every year you don't know who's going to win it like it's mm-hmm. a very competitive league like one minute the bottom of the league will be the top of the league it, it is very like uh, that's what I love about the championship is you just don't know what's going to happen um, so in that sense it was good um, I had I feel like um, it took me a while to get into it um, and I think that was just where obviously I was learning a lot of stuff I was young um, I did have a few injuries and stuff so um, in that sense but I, I, I love my time there and it is a great club I think if you've been somewhere from the age of 11 till like your early teen years, mm. whether you want to or not at Oxford, you probably would have had some level of like comfort blanket or a comfort yeah. zone. I think it's just natural. Mm-hmm. Um, did that help you going to Lewis, taking you out of the comfort zone? Not just, obviously I know you'd played in the championship with Oxford previously, but I think it was a different championship, if you know what I mean by that point. You came yeah. back and you were older, you'd mm-hmm. learned a bit more. But how much did it help taking you out of that comfort zone and, and not being at Oxford and being at this new club? Mm. It, it, to be honest, um, I was very much, do I go, do I not? And I mm-hmm. remember my dad saying to me, look, I think you should go. Um, you might not get this opportunity again. You've been at the club for a very long time. And I think this is just showing that there's something there for you. And if you don't take it, you might never be able to. So I was very much like, okay, I'm going to take it. Um, and I'm glad I did take it because I feel like if I hadn't, I probably would still be at Oxford now. Um, not saying that's a bad thing, but I, I'm glad because I want to be doing stuff. I, I, I've always wanted a career in football. That was always what I wanted. So being able to push myself, um, it definitely helped me a lot. I definitely changed as a player. I understood a lot more stuff. Um, obviously, being in the cup banker, I was literally like that at Oxford, just doing the simple things and just, yeah. And I was working a lot then. I managed to, as soon as I went to Lewis, um, the second season at Lewis, I quit my job and managed to go full time with Lewis, which was great for me. And ever since stopped working um, physically, mentally, everything, I've been a lot better in myself and managed to grow as a player. In terms of, you touched on the moving from professional, uh, sorry, non-professional or part-time to professional. I feel like I'm asking the most obvious question ever, but I just think it's really interesting for people listening to understand because I've worked with players who have been classed as amateur, quote unquote. Um, so they come from the 95 stick a Tesco meal deal down the throat and all of a sudden that's them going to train yeah. before a top of the table clash. Going professional just allows you to kind of work on your body, work on your physique, work how you're going to play, learn tactics, think, live and breathe football. But how much... Does that benefit going from being able to concentrate a little bit on football to just always football? Um, massively. I never realised until it happened how much going from semi professional to professional, like you said there, like you're eating, you're sleeping, you're recovering so much better. Um, you by going to be able to go to the gym and physically. Uh, it's so much better like I could never imagine myself now going and getting a nine-to-five job and then going to go into football and I used to do that all the time and I I still look back and I'm like how did I manage to do that but when I was working I was picking up injuries and ever since then like I I don't as much anymore and it it, and I feel so much better in myself and when it comes to game days I I can give everything I've got not that 50 percent so it is and also like you basically live and breathe football which I've always wanted to do um and you don't realize until you actually do it and you realize like sometimes I forget like this is my job and I hate it I love it um and there's still other players out there that aren't there yet which they want to be and if you just keep pushing and working hard you will eventually get there 
Yeah, and I think that's been proven across the leagues. I mean, like, for example, we're talking about Scotland. Four years ago, you couldn't have imagined professional clubs in Scotland. Now there's three. There's mm-hmm. semi-pro ones with professional players throughout it. There's only going to be more. It's not going to go backwards. It's only going to go forward. No. Yeah. Um, to touch on just the, the end of your time at Lewis, I feel like I've skipped through a lot of it, um, but it's hard to get through a lot of stuff in 40 months. Trust me, people <laughs> who are listening. Um, as fans were sort of beginning to come back at games and stuff like that, you scored, obviously, a really memorable winning goal against the Champions League, which was Liverpool at the time. Was that your final Lewis goal? Correct me if I'm right. Yes, it was. That was in front of a record crowd at the time as well, I think just under 3,000. Um, mm-hmm. Talk about wanting to leave a club on a perfect note. How perfect an yeah. ending was that for you? Uh, I think that just settled everything. Um, like, I had a tough time at Lewis in a sense of scoring. Mm-hmm. So, and I, there would be games where I should have finished that opportunity and I used to think in my head, why? Why, what, why can't I do it? Like, what, what's going on? I used to get in my head a lot. Um, so, also, my whole family were there for the Liverpool game, which was lovely uh, because just scoring that, I think it was a bit of a relief, especially against the champions. Um, and then obviously we went on and 1-2-1. Um, our keeper scored, which it was a very weird game, but a great game. Um, and I think that sort of just made me realise I can do it. Um, I can... and. Obviously, after the game, I went straight up to my dad. He gave me a hug and he was very proud of me, which is nice. Um, But no, that game was honestly, I'd say one of my best games. And at Lewis, in a sense of like the crowds, the atmosphere, everything. It was such a great day. I'll always remember that day. You talk about struggling for goals there and how that can affect confidence. It's a cliche that like strikers thrive off scoring goals. Every mm-hmm. striker goes through a period when you don't. That's just mm-hmm. the way it is. Um, how difficult are those periods when like you just feel like you want something to go in off your backside and nothing will go in? <laughs> like how difficult yeah. are those periods? They are so difficult. Um, it's very much mentally. Mm-hmm. Um especially if you get in your own head and you think about it you just tense up you just need to be relaxed um just relaxing because once the first one goes in that's it like you you relax you don't think about it is when you overthink it that's when they don't um and they are very very tough times i have been through them quite a few times especially at lewis i feel like that was very much in my head a lot um but I feel like you can come out of that side of it. As soon as you get that goal, then you're on your way. It, but it is, for any striker, it is a horrible place to be in. But having good people around you and people that are comp- like even you, you, your managers be, having confidence in you, just having that bit of confidence will help you. But it is hard trying to get confidence as well. I find it quite interesting that um, one of my favourite strikers of all time, Jermaine Defoe, um, love him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that he had a compilation made when he was at Sunderland of all the goals he scored for Sunderland that he would just watch prior to the game. Mm-hmm. Um, is that the kind of thing that strike? I mean, it sounds bizarre, egotistical, but that's a striker, right? Um, yeah. Is that the kind of thing that helps just looking back and going, well, that was that and that was that. I did this, yeah. I've done that. When you're going through those periods. Yeah, when you're at your lowest, the best thing is to watch back them games that you played, you played well and... Um, because that just gives you a little bit of confidence and mm-hmm. shows you that you can do it when when you're down. All you think is, I can't do it, I can't do it. But if you look back, you're like, okay, I did it then, so why can't I do it now? You you still got the quality that you had. It's just things aren't working, but things will end up working if you just put your head in the right space of mind, really. Do you stop working on instinct when you're not scoring and start like kind of like trying to score the perfect goal? And when you yeah. are scoring, it's just instinct, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, no, you start trying to do things that you wouldn't do. Um, Trying to just hit it from wherever or just trying to hit it with power instead of placement. Just little things like that. Um, But when you are full of confidence and you're instant, you're you're just gliding it in really, like you're you're just passing it in rather than smashing it in. Um, So, yeah, no, I have been in, like I said, I have been in them situations before. So it's just coming out of them is like I said once you get that goal but some some players don't get that goal they find their confidence somewhere else so then then they get the goals elsewhere 
obviously we, we've covered your time at Hearts. Um, so just mm-hmm. a few short and snappy ones before I do let you go, Georgia. But you've came up against the likes of um, Nifa Fahey, Sarah McFadden at Durham, some really tough mm-hmm. opponents. But who's the toughest opponent you've came up against? Uh, toughest opponent that I I can actually I remember very well was um Frank Kirby. Uh, yeah. So she was injured. Um, it's when she was coming back from injury. So she was playing for the development squad in uh, Chelsea, and um, I was also being injured. I'd had a ankle injury, which put me out for eight months. So uh, I was playing for the dev squad for the Oxford. And we were playing against Chelsea development. And we were, yeah, Fran was playing then. And yeah, just unreal. Such a great player. Like technically, just fast, everything can finish a ball. Just one of the best players I've ever seen. Can't argue with it. Yeah. <laughs> Can't argue with it. Um, you came up against, obviously, we've mentioned Chloe Kelly here, we've mentioned Fran Kirby. So we've definitely got a Euro 2022 theme, um, or European 2022 <laughs> champions theme, should I say. Um, I know you looked up the, to Drogba when you were young because of who you supported. And obviously, uh, we all know why anyone would look up to Didier Drogba. But if you had to pick a, a current playing woman striker that, you, you know, you, not that you'd model your game on, but that you look up to and just think they're fantastic, who would be the striker you would pick out? Uh, Miedemar. Yeah. Just the absolute baller. <laughs> yeah. Just everything. Uh, just literally her movement, her strength, her finishing, just... Everything about her, really. Great player. Did you happen to see, um, this will be old news by the time this goes out, but nonetheless, did you see Getty Images posted a photo of Vivian Miedemar and Guest, um, which yes, was Bethany? I did. Yes. Awful. Absolutely awful. Oh, no, no, no. Bad news. But I, I have to agree with Viv. Probably, probably my favourite player um, yeah. of, of current. Two feet and, and a stat the other day. I think it's 152 goals for Arsenal. No penalties. Just, just yeah, just got unreal stats. <laughs> silly, isn't it? Just silly. Yeah. Um, and final question: We're gonna, I'm gonna have this question on every podcast. Um, I'm hopefully gonna get a few of yous and, and a few ums and airs while you're thinking about it. But what's your ultimate five-a-side team using players you've only played alongside? And it's up to you whether you include yourself or not. <laughs> okay. Um. So to start off in goal. I will put uh, Demi Lamborn, who is at Leicester now. Um, obviously, I played with her at Oxford United. Absolute lovely girl and just unreal uh, goalkeeper. Um, so I'd put her in goal. Um, I put in centre back. I put Emma Brownley, who's at Hearts at the minute. Uh, just solid um, and lovely girl as well. Um, I'd put. It, Midfield, um, I played with her at Oxford, and I always said that she was she had a lot of injuries, which set her back, and um, she couldn't really come back from really. But one of the best centre I played with was Kaylee Hines. Just could find anyone. Just absolute workhorse, the just unreal player. I always said that growing up as well. I always looked up to her. Um, I'm gonna say. Lucy Ashworth Clifford, um, she's a good friend of mine, and I played with her at Lewis, and she's doing really well at Celtic at the minute. Um, and yeah, no, she's s- such a <laughs> ball of really. Everyone loves her up here, to be fair. Um, and then how many is that? Is that four? Four. I stick myself up top. Why not? <laughs> yeah, every, every number nine has to do that if you're building your best team around you you might as well pick the best players that are going to feed you so then you've got back yourself right yeah yeah exactly not, not as egotistical <laughs> as it sounds um, <laughs> but Georgia lovely chatting I wish you all the luck in the world apart from obviously your games against Glasgow City which I'm sure you understand <laughs> um, but thanks for having me on I, I think I meant to say like share and subscribe but it's fine if you don't um, appreciate oh, you coming on thank you very much oh, no thank you pleasure Thank you.